Hello, hello, and welcome back to our first question and answer of August 2022. We've got our questions. If you are stumbling upon this video for the first time, I get a ton, a ton of questions about working from home, frugal living, social media. I do a small channel, as y'all can see. So these questions are things that I've written down that have been on videos, that have been emailed, messaged to me, whatever. So let's look at the first one. I am working 1099. How can I save for retirement? Um, saving for retirement can often seem like a difficult option for a lot of people to take. Uh, there are several ways you can do this. I know some people use a Fundrise account, F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com, and that is a uh, where you get parts of real estate properties and you get money back every so often, you know, on top of that. Um, money market accounts, savings accounts that uh, draw interest, you can do Roth IRA, regular RAs, you know. Um, the best thing to do is to decide how much out of every paycheck that you want to, like a percentage, 6%, and talk to a banker, and they can put you in the right direction. Now, I, for myself, I just use an interest-bearing savings account. Okay. How do I know how many hours I work as a 1099? Um, so I am with LiveOps, which is a 1099 uh, company that you can contract with their clients to work. And I get paid per talk minute. Now I keep a calendar that says, you know, maybe I only want to work 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. or maybe 11 to 1 and then 2 to 4. So I keep a calendar that keeps track of my hours worked. Um, during invoicing, they'll tell you how much talk time you've had, how many minutes, times how much per minute. My client with LiveOps pays on the transfers. Every time you transfer a call, they pay you so much money. So that's just kind of how you got to do it. How do I budget my money as a, a lot of 1099 questions. How do I budget my money as a 1099? So I have used QuickBooks in the past, QuickBooks Freelancer, to keep track of my uh, money coming in and deductions. And then I use uh, TurboTax to file my taxes. But I keep, a, if you've seen my budget channel, which I will link down below, which starts um, this month restarts. I had a few old videos, but it'll restart this month. And I go through and I show you a simple spreadsheet that I use um, to go ahead and keep track of my budgets and stuff like that. So, you know, you can do a paper budget, you know, basically, you know, money in, bills out, stuff like that. Okay. Okay, Company X offered me a position. It pays per talk minute. You're probably not going to talk the whole hour. So, for example, little calculator here. If I get paid 25 cents a talk minute, that would be $15 an hour. But we'll say that I'm only talking 45 minutes. So, 25 times 45. And that ends up being $11.25 a minute. Lord, I done dropped something on the ground. I'll find it later. Um, so, yeah, you know, you'll get a sense within your first two weeks how much you're talking and kind of plan it from there. Now, with Live Ops, they update within 48 hours your talk time and your money, so you kind of know what your rolling amount's going to be. A lot of 1099 questions. Another one. How do you choose between a W-2 set schedule or a 1099 flexible schedule? Well, I have health concerns. If you have health concerns 
or family obligations. So a lot of us, a lot of you out there, you're stay-at-home parents, and I'm not going to say just stay-at-home mothers because fathers can be stay-at-home parents too. If you need to pick your child up from school, drop them off at the daycare, maybe during the middle of the day you have toddlers and you need a break from working, then 1099 is what you're is what's going to work for you. <laughs> Got to love the cat in the background. Um, so if you have your kids in daycare, someone else is taking care of them, then a W-2 job is going to work for you. But a lot of it's going to depend on what you need as a family. So that is something you need to discuss. Explain a home office setup. Okay. Um, so on my office, I have a ba very basic desk that I got for 50 bucks off Amazon. Um, it's, it doesn't have, a, it has one shelf with it and just very flat. I've got dual monitors, a wired keyboard, mouse, and USB headset. I work for, for a company that I provide my own equipment, so there's no taking equipment back and forth, worrying about stuff not working. It's all set up, and I have an Ethernet connection to my modem and router. Okay, how long should my Ethernet cord be? I live in a very wide apartment, so on one end, there's a bedroom bathroom. On the other end, there's a bedroom bathroom. And in the middle is the living room, dining room, kitchen. And my uh, modem and the router is located in the living room. I use a 50-foot Cat 8 Ethernet cord. And, that is, and I sit there and switch out my Ethernet cord every two years. But about 50, 50 feet if you need it. What is better, single or dual monitors? I was a single monitor person for a very, very long time. And I now I am all about the dual monitors. I'd put three monitors up if I could get away with it. But dual monitors is the way to go. I can work on one. So I've got a monitor here. And then my first monitor here, second monitor there. So I, I am loving the dual monitors. How do I explain employment gaps? You can stretch your employment, you know, here and there to see how things are. Um, always, not every work at home job is for everybody. So I have done a lot of health care work from home, customer service positions. I don't care to continue to do that. One of the great things about live ops is you can get with retail, tax, utility, um, healthcare, um, a lot of different clients. Um, I work for a healthcare field sort of position now, but it's very low key. So that's kind of, you know, what is going on with that. Um, but to explain an employment gap, you know, just be honest. You know, you took some time for family. Um, you took your time to go for jobs that are better suited to you. And you can flip that into, and that's why I you know, applied to your company because of A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. How do you time bathroom breaks and coffee? You all know. I love my coffee. It says joy on it right there. So I always make sure in the morning I'm tired. Um, sometimes I'm a morning person, sometimes I'm not. I will jump up and get two cups of coffee and then set a cup of coffee there. I've got my peach tea. Sometimes I drink soda. It depends how much caffeine I need. So um, when you are 1099, you just schedule your bathroom breaks. I work about two to three hours, schedule a half hour off, half hour to an hour, then two to three hours, and then done for the day. But definitely go to the bathroom before you start work and in your lunch time. How do you work X hours after your full-time job? 
you know, I did that for a long time and so got burnt out on it. Now I've got my social media income, my other income, and then my 1099 income. So don't burn yourself out trying to work two, three jobs. Some people can do it. Me, sometimes to a point. Okay. What software do you use for your videos? So I use Canva, C-A-N-V-A. And I use them for my video intros, thumbnails. I use, um, I've used TubeBuddy off and on. You know, sometimes it helps, sometimes it don't. Um, I use Screencast-O-Matic for my screen sharing. And I have a yearly uh, thing with them on a yearly plan. So that's kind of what I'm using right now. Um, it's very bare basics. If you can't afford a video operator, Google search Olive, O-L-I-V-E. That is a free editor. Um, you just got to play around with it to kind of learn how to do everything. Um, but yeah, you know, that's pretty much what I do. I'm very, very basic. Very basic. So anyways, thank you so much for waiting until the end of the video. If you like question and answer videos, hit the subscribe, bell, and um, like button. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.